Hello and welcome my partners in crime, welcome back to another missing case. Now this is case four. Now the case four of our campaign for the missing to help bring some awareness of what's going on out there. Now these people are still missing, no trace of them has ever been found, so it's really important that you get these cases out there and try and help support. And if you know anything about any of these cases that we are doing, please contact the people that have listed on each of these cases or just contact missing persons and uh, all the uh, missing stuff will be put up and it would be really really you know I would be really really grateful if you could do that it would be really really good now today's case is a different appearance of uh, Patrick Warren and David Spencer now you know sad cases case two kids best friends you know, gone missing, and they've gone missing just on the 27th of December, 1996. There's two schoolboys. You know, one of them had just got a brand new bike for Christmas. You know, a couple of days after Christmas, these children, two families here, devastated. Until this day, they are focused on finding these children and what happened to these children. This is a shocking case, this. It's absolutely heart-wrenching. I really feel... For this family i really do because again these are two children that have just gone without a trace so patrick warren and david spencer were these two english schoolboys who disappeared on the 27th of december 1996 in the town of solihull near birmingham now although although this initial light was treated by police as a runaway you know they are now presumed that they had died right on this night that's what people or the police now are saying that has happened now listen there's a lot of issues around um this case in 1996 of why really they was classed as a runaway probably because there was two of them but these were very young children and we're going to their ages and everything in a minute these were very young children you know school kids you know what one walk in one on his bike just disappear and the police say, oh, it's a runaway. Now, there's some things that will come out and I'll leave it up to you to make up your mind what you think, whether that's the case or not. So, okay, let's get to the facts of this case. So on Boxing Day evening of 1996, best friends Patrick Warren and David Spencer left their um, Chelmsley Wood homes and they were playing outside. Now, Patrick left on his brand new bike which had been a Christmas present while David was walking along beside him. The boys had been spotted by the police officer early that afternoon playing with another group of children in um, Meridian Park and, um, and that I think they had been warned by this police officer not to go on the lake because, you know, it was frozen, this pond was frozen and we all know what happens when kids play on frozen ponds or whatever. It can be dangerous. So the police had seen them, so that was an eyewitness testimony that you can uphold that this policeman saw them earlier on in that evening they were playing around this pond and um, he told them to move on and I think actually that's probably what they did went home and then they returned oh, they returned home I think after that and they told their parents that they were planning to visit one of Patrick's brothers that evening now Derek Warren Patrick's another of Patrick brothers went looking for the boys the next day so don't forget this is why the disappearance is the 27th not the 26th i think they probably actually disappeared on the 26th i think this is what it was because when uh, derek warren this you know patrick's other brother went looking for him the next day it was found that they had not arrived there at all so the reason it's classed as disappearance on the 27th of december 1996 is because that's when they was reported missing because up until then no one had a clue that these boys were even missing. Very sad, really. So the last known sighting of the boys was just after midnight by a petrol station attendant who gave them a packet of biscuits. Now, Patrick's brand new red Apollo bicycle was found abandoned behind the petrol station near the bins. Now, although police did not realize that this was it until several weeks later, the petrol station attendant said he saw the boys walking towards the local shopping centre. And then you, they're saying that they, they found the bike 
behind the petrol station up against the bins. Now, it is fault that one of the child could have placed that bike there and thought, I'm going to go across the road to a different shop. But you know, you have to think, don't yourself, take yourself back to maybe when you was a child and you've got a brand new bike, you know, for Christmas. Would you have left it there? Why would you have done that? Why would he have done it? Because I wouldn't have done it if I got a brand new bike when I was this age. I wouldn't have left it anywhere. I wouldn't have left it anywhere. So I think there's issues there with that for me. You know, there's a red flag there with that. Why this boy, if he had left this bike there, why? Is it? Especially in 1996, most shops were closed for weeks in 1996. Weren't like now, they're open 24-7. So, you know, that's an issue to think why would this child leave his bike there? That's a real issue for me and that's a red flag for me because I don't think he would have done it. So someone else must have placed that bike there. But of course now it's out, been out and it's been several weeks later before they're linked together. I don't know what happened with this uh, investigation in the beginning but obviously, uh, you know, it's not great. Anyway, so police initially treated the boy's disappearance as this normal missing persons inquiry. I mean, <laughs> Anyway, what can I, I'm, I'm not saying it. You can think what I'm saying, but I'm not saying it. It's late, the police are now, but sometimes I think I just need to give it a break. But anyway, but because there was no confirmed sightings of this boy from Boxing Day, senior officers told the media that there was no reason to suppose that they had come to any harm. Really? I don't know, I don't know how I hold it in. Anyway. This is what the police said in the initial investigation of this crime of two young children gone missing over a Christmas period that, oh, don't worry, it's just a disappearance, they probably ran off, you know, there's been no signs of them, no hair or hands of them, oh, so probably there's no harm's come to them. I be got sacked. Anyway, so Professor David Wilson, who I really like, and if you have a chance to watch any of his stuff, watch it. Now, he's a criminologist and he studies... Um, he studied the police initial response to the boy's disappearance. Now he concluded, and it's him concluding, and I like you think, because I don't know if I agree with him, I think I may agree with him, do you agree with him? But he says his initial response to this boy's disappearance concluded that Patrick's and David's were working class people from these backgrounds of working class. And that affected how this case was handled. I think we have to agree. Don't you? What is it? Because they were from Solihull, you know, Birmingham. You have very young children gone missing. No harm's come to them. They've just run away. Why? Because they're from working class? Come on. Come on. Anyway, I, you know, I'll leave it down to you. Let me know what you think. But really, you know, I think I like Professor David Wilson anyway. And, and he's quite straight out. He's a little bit like myself. He says it as it is. And uh, I think this, in this case, this has to be said, to tell you the truth. It has to be said. Because really, you know, when we have a child that goes missing, then first 24 hours, really the first two hours, the first hour, the first couple of hours is really important. But when you have the police that then lags and they come out with this, no worries, don't worry, it's just they've run away, they're runaways. You know, you're really hindering that case. And that case then is, you know, as time goes on, it's even more difficult then to get a real conclusion to this case or in this case, maybe finding these kids' bodies. Citizen David continues to say as if, if, if the boys had been from a middle class solid hole background and when they went missing, this case would have been treated initially very different. I agree, really. And it's about, you know, this word, you know, that we can never allow to use, he says, this class word, you know, the lower class, the working class, the middle class, you know, you know, it's bullshit really when it comes to children that's gone missing, isn't it? Does it matter where they come from, what upbringing they've got, what areas they live in? Does it matter? Should it matter? No, of course it shouldn't. Anyway, I'm glad he brought it up in this case. He's done a lot of work actually in this case. I'm glad he's brought it up because it has to be said because it, I think it has really hindered this case. You know, and these police are trying to make up for it. Of course they are. But, you know, there was failings here from this place very, very early on. You know, these boys were vulnerable kids. 
right? They were out in the street. Okay, they lied to their parents or did they? Was they gonna go to the brothers but thought we'd have a little bit of fun first? Your kids, we've all done it. We've all done it. But would a child though, when there's nothing else really open, leave the bike behind the service station? Would they? No, they wouldn't. So there's issues here with this case right from day one. And then the police not finding that bike initially for weeks after. It's a real issue in this case. It's hindered this case to where now we are still looking for any information on these children to this day. Yeah, I'm not even going to let the press off here on this one. You know, you've got two young kids missing from this area. The only press that done anything about it was a local press. That was it. There was no national press media out there looking for these two young kids. Why? Why wasn't there? It's bloody shocking. It's terrible, really. This case, if it had been highlighted, if it had been pushed as it should have been pushed, we would have found something much, I'm sure we would have. People would have come forward here. Someone may have had, and I've always said it, someone always knows something, don't they? And it may be so insignificant that at that point in that time, they didn't think that it was relevant information. If the press had been out there in force, encouraging people to come forward, you know, doing reconstructions of where they were and what they look like, and stuff something or someone may have come forward so there were big failings here really across the board really i believe there was now i think you know uh, i think um david calls it you know this missing white girl syndrome but anyway you know i just call it bloody unforgivable unforgivable really really is from all areas of this anyway however these boys faces were the first among um, these milk carton kids, what they called the milk carton kids. And this was, I think, done by um, uh, Iceland. They done it. Now, this was really a breakthrough campaign, really. But again, it was launched in 1997, so it was a year later. And, and it was April 1997. They went missing in December, so say six months sort of time. Um, and it, you know, I, I thought this was a great idea, this milk carton um, pictures on the kids, you know, can you help? Because in them days, everyone either had a milkman or, you know, they was going to the shop. Now we have so many different types of milk and God, you go in a shop. But, and also these days we have social media, which gets out to a lot more people. But these were one of the first real um, kids to be used as in that, that form of promotion of the missing really was used on these milk cartons. And that was launched actually by the National uh, Missing Persons Helpline in April 1997. So thank God someone tried something to find these missing kids and others. Now in this area, just after these children went missing, just days after they disappeared, this 17 year old Nicole uh, Dixon was found uh, raped and murdered in a graveyard about eight miles away from Sutton Coalfield. Her killer though was caught and he was found and convicted and police say these resources in the media between New Year's Day and Christmas of 1970, 1996 was dominated by the Dixon case. At the same time as this going on and the news all the national news was dominated by that and I always say that if you know if this press are going to do these stories try and make it fair even out I know there's a lot of missing and stuff goes on but you know when you have the police saying well it was just you know um runaways the press are not interested if the police had come out straight away and said these people these kids have disappeared under you know you know, suspicious circumstances publicised it that way rather than just a runaway and they're not in you know not going to come to any harm um i think the press may have been different in this but that was what was going on at that time as well there now um we had on the 10th anniversary actually of their disappearance the boys uh, this bbc crime watch came out this special appeal for information and it did uh it didn't really, I think, get any new leads at all because, as I said, it was quite late at night. There wasn't a lot going on here. You had a few eyewitnesses, didn't you, saying, you know, this, that and the other, but nothing really significant. In 2003, the West Midland Police 
publicly announced that they had arrested a 37 year old man in connection with the disappearance he was later released on bail and again has never been charged with anything that was another failing uh, there but at least they was trying um a second crime watch appeal then went out um i think and in 2006 police announced that they were closer than ever to solving the mystery of what happened to these boys but despite this renewed hope and you're and you know all these things are giving this family hope aren't they right they think okay you've arrested someone no that ain't work nothing to do with them now in 2006 you've got renewed hope again nothing come from it nothing come from it and i'm not saying the police ain't working on it but when you have children going missing in 1996 no cctv no nothing you know very little evidence around because of the time of night that they went missing um there's not a sign of them all what's left of this two boys is this bike that wasn't found for weeks so there isn't a lot to go on all right so they'd be starting fresh every time they look into something these cases then have got to come through every bit of information again has got to come through and even though they've had all these appeals from crime watch and everything else no new leads so uh, now <laughs> in 2006 the paedophile brian field was named as a suspect However, the police were not able to secure a, con a confession or obtain tangible evidence to connect him with the boy's disappearance. And as I always say in all these cases, you know, um, it was about the evidence. Listen, these paedophiles, these killers are not going to come out and tell you anything. You know, I think, I think uh, this uh, Brian Lunfield, I mean, he was uh, a prime suspect in, in many cases, actually he was convicted of one. So anyway, this uh, paedophile and the serial offender against young boys, this Brian Lunfield became the prime suspect in this case after the conviction of 2001, the abduction of this 14 year old schoolboy. Now, um, now, he was then in his car and then he murdered him after offering, offering him a lift. So, yes, okay, okay, you've got the serial killer now that you think, okay, that's all right, or the serial offender of, of young um, young boys um, in this area at this time. But I think, uh, and I don't really want to mention much about this case, I'm actually going to do this case another time. I'm doing a thing on field at the moment, so here come up. But in 2001, listen, he, did, he was then arrested and charged and convicted um, of... Um, the murder of this young lad and that was also linked by dna so we know what this man is right we know what he is now after phil's conviction in 2001 it was reported that he had already been investigated him for this for um warren and spencer case now this disappearance was 1996 and this was alongside another murder um committed um a murder of a boy in 1984 now there's lots going on here but when we look at Fields. And we look, the first person he met was caught for murder. He worked as the landscape gardener, he worked as the gardener in that area. And he also worked for the family of that child, so he knew that child. At the time of these boys' disappearance, um, he was working, right, so one of the little lads' homes, at the time in Solihull. So these boys may have known him in passing, you know, chatting. Now, this field says it himself, you know, he was, uh, <laughs> he only lost it, really, got very aggressive and angry when he was drinking. When he wasn't drinking, he was nice and this, that and the other. So he blames alcohol on the reason why he is a pervert and why he, you know, kills kids, tries to abduct kids and, and stuff. But he was in this area at this time. Now, these two boys, you, know, you are talking about two of them. I think before that, there was another case with him that he had tried to abduct two boys, one of them boys being 16-year-old, both together. Uh, and really, they actually got away by literally jumping out of the moving car to get away from him. He was, again, intoxicated and everything. And they really had to fight for their lives, and they jumped from that moving car. And that's what saved their lives, really. So... Do we think that Fields may have done this case? Absolutely. He would have probably, you know, without a doubt, have done this case. But there's no evidence. Now, because both these kids would have seen him in this area doing the gardening, you know, he was a nice man, chatty. 
their guard would have been down and he could have seen them that night and said, oh, leave your bike there, lads. You know, he's a bit of a drinker. They may have thought, oh, you know, we've had a lot, haven't we, of killers, you know, enticing people into their car to have a little bit of a drink and this, that and the other. The minute them boys would have got in that car, it would have been def difficult for these boys to have got out of that car. Very difficult. This man was a very violent man when he was drunk and he would have been drunk. These boys would not have stood a chance, even though there was two of them. And he'd already lost two boys that jumped out of the car previously. That was, would not have happened again for this man. There was no way now that these kids were going to jump out of a moving car with him. So if he had taken these children, one, he would have got rid of their bodies. And that's probably why they can't find them. Now the police had searched lots of different places for these kids. They've done a lot of stuff now for these kids to try and find what has happened to him. But up until today, there has been no sighting of these two boys, these two best friends that left their home on the 26th of December, reported missing on the 27th of December, 1996. To this day, there is nothing. So if you have any information on any of the cases, especially on this case, to help this family, because this family is still searching, searching for something, just even the bodies, these kids need to be brought home, even if it is to be put to rest. So thank you for joining me. Thank you, you know, for all, um, all your support in this missing persons case. I really um, appreciate everything you do. Thank you to my partners in crime, my patrons, for your support through this. Listen, you can hit the bell button, you can hit the subscribe button, you can hit the like button. You can do um, all this stuff, you know, hit the bell button for notifications that are coming out. And the next case coming up will be case five. If you have any information on this case, please tell someone. I'll leave the information down there. So until the next time, thank you for watching.